In this episode, we're going to be covering player instantiation. Firstly, I want to talk about the architecture of what we're going to design to handle the players in our game. We're going to make two prefabs, a player manager and a player controller. The player manager prefab will manage things like persistent player data, respawning and death, and receiving info from other players, and it will act as a permanent communications class between networked players. The player controller prefab will be the actual controllable player character, and will handle things like player movement and shooting. We need this type of architecture for a multiplayer game because we always want players to be able to communicate with each other other in some way. If I kill another player but get shot immediately after and my playable character is destroyed, we still want the player we killed to know they were killed by me and I want to know that I killed the player. If we didn't have a player manager to handle communications, then the killed player wouldn't be able to communicate their death to us in any way since their playable character was destroyed. This is our instantiation order. We'll have a room manager which instantiates our player manager prefab when we join a room. Then, that player manager will instantiate our player controller and handle destroying and instantiating it from there out. When we leave the room, our player manager and player controller prefabs will automatically be destroyed by Photon and the room manager will remain there. Make sense? If not, then hopefully it will start to over the course of the video and if you have any more questions after you finish watching, you can post them in the comments. To start it off, I want to move all of our scripts into the scripts folder because I want to keep them nice and tidy. Let's create our room manager first. I'm going to create an empty game object and rename it room manager. Then I'm going to add a new script to it called room manager. I'm going to make sure to use the namespace photon.pun and inherit from monobehavior pun callbacks. All I want to do here is detect when we switch scenes and when we do, instantiate our player manager prefab. I'm going to make this class a singleton by making a new variable, public static room manager instance, and filling out our awake method with this code. This is the standard singleton pattern. When the script starts, it checks if another room manager is already in the scene. If it is, it destroys itself and returns. If it's the only room manager, then it makes itself the instance and makes itself not destroyed when the scene switches. This ensures there will only ever be one room manager in the scene. Next, I'm going to add in overrides for the on enable and on disable callbacks. If your class inherits from a Photon class, you'll need to call the base methods of onEnable and onDisable since they are essential to Photon functioning correctly. Note that onEnable and onDisable are the only two methods that need a base call when inheriting from Photon classes, and all other override methods are safe to just override without calling the base. Next, we'll import UnityEngine.SceneManagement. In our onEnable and onDisable methods, we'll subscribe and unsubscribe from the callback SceneLoaded with a new method we'll call onSceneLoaded with two input variables Scene and LoadSceneMode. Subscribing to this callback from UnitySceneManagement class means whenever we switch the scene, our onSceneLoaded method will be called. Now, we can make an if statement to check if the scene we are switching to is our game scene. In our build settings, we can verify the build index of our game scene and make sure that number is the one we're checking. This is where we will instantiate our player manager prefab. Instantiating a prefab with Photon is different from instantiating a prefab normally in Unity. Since the prefab will need to be spawned on other people's computers, we reference it via a string which indicates the name of our prefab, rather than a reference to the prefab object in the editor, like normal instantiation. All prefabs that we want to instantiate with Photon need to be in the resources folder. Normally, Unity automatically excludes anything not referenced in the editor from the final build. Since the prefabs we want to instantiate with Photon aren't actually referenced in the editor anywhere, rather with a string, we need them to be included in the final build even though they aren't referenced. In Unity, we solve this problem by putting the prefabs in the resources folder. Anything in the resources folder will be included in the final build, whether it is referenced in the editor or not. For organization, I like to make a subfolder called Photon Prefabs, which will hold all of our prefabs we want to instantiate with Photon. Let's create our Player Manager Prefab. I'm going to create an empty game object and rename it Player Manager, and also reset its transform. I'm also going to add a Photon View component. All Photon Prefabs are required to have a Photon View component, and it allows them to sync with other people's games over the network. Now we'll just drag it into our Photon Prefabs folder to make it into a prefab, and we can also delete it from our scene. We also want to add a Photon View component onto our Room Manager, because in order to instantiate Photon prefabs, the object instantiating them needs to have a Photon View. Let's write the code to instantiate the object. We'll start with PhotonNetwork.instantiate. Then we need to import System.io so that we can have access to the Path class. We're going to use Path.Combine to create a new path with a combination of our Photon prefabs folder and the name of our prefab, which is Player Manager. We then need to specify the position and rotation of our prefab. Since the player manager will just be an empty game object, we can spawn it at Vector3.0 and Quaternion.identity. 
Back in Unity, let's select our room manager and set the photon view's view ID to the maximum, which is 999. If we were to load a scene that had a photon view in it with a view ID of 1, and our room manager had a view ID of 1, we would get an error since all view IDs must be unique. By setting the room manager's view ID to the max, we ensure that we never have that conflict. If we run the game now, you can see that our player manager prefab is instantiated, and the photon view's owner is our own player. After building the game and creating a test room, once the room is started, you can see that two player managers are instantiated, one which we own, and one which the other player owns. In the next episode, we'll cover instantiating player controllers. Thank you everyone for watching, and I hope that this higher production quality version was nice for you.